Okay. Hi, my name is Amy Bryant of Wild Child Counseling and Parenting Beyond Punishment. I am a psychotherapist for children, adolescents, and parents here in Atlanta, Georgia at Wild Child Counseling. And I do online parent uh, education uh, worldwide through Parenting Beyond Punishment. Um, I am here today with Dr. Lynetta Willis, and I had the pleasure of meeting her at a school discipline conference here in Atlanta earlier this year, actually in February. And as soon as I started talking with her, I knew that I wanted her to come speak with you today during this event. Um, and just to really share her wisdom, her insights, I really love the work that she's doing. <sighs> I had to run outside for my dog, so I'm catching my breath. So Dr. Willis is a psychologist and an author, and she created the research-based program Elemental Living Model, and it combines imagery, brain science, and psycho-spiritual principles to help parents stop reacting so they can respond appropriately and deeply connect with their family and with themselves. Welcome, Dr. Willis. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited, too. have been waiting a while for this. I know, right? <laughs> I just remember sitting in that table going, oh, my gosh, I'm going to ask her if she'll join yeah. us for the event. It was you so great. So I mean, we just, we really did talk. I think I was late for a couple of uh, breakouts because we were just talking. Because <laughs> we were chatting. I know. It was so fantastic. Yeah. So I'm just really excited for you to share some of that with, um, with the people here with us today. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about what led you to ele the elemental living model. Yeah. So <laughs> funny enough, so the journey to elemental living, the elemental living model started before I actually had kids. So when I found out I was pregnant, my first reaction, of course, was excitement. And then I freaked out a little bit because I was raised by what I call the four horsemen mindset. And um, the, the four horsemen mindset is pain, blame, shame, and avoidance. And that's not to shame my family or blame them. I mean, it's this thing where it's like, that's how they were raised. That's how they were, you know, it, it kind of goes back. And, and I realized that I was clear that I needed to be the stopgap for that mindset and for it transferring onto my, my children. But the problem was I didn't really know how. So even though, you know, I'd been in mental health field for a while already, I didn't really know how to, to make this transformation happen. All I knew was I didn't want to pass my stuff on to my kids or as some of my clients say, I didn't want to screw up my kids. Um, and uh, there's a phrase by Richard Rohr. He's a, he's a Franciscan monk and he says, um, if you do not transform your pain, you will transmit it. So I could hear that <laughs> running in my head. So I did, I always say this, I did what all mental health professionals do when they can't figure out something. I specialized in it. And <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we so lucky, too, to be able to specialize in something we feel so passionate about? Exactly. Exactly. It definitely felt like a soul's calling. You know, I really yeah. felt like I, I felt like family empowerment was going to be the area that I was going to land in. So I specialized in couples and family. I specialized in trauma. I did a lot of parenting work. And then I realized as I did a lot of this work and I did a lot of my own work with my own kids that it's not as easy as one may think. <laughs> you know, you can learn the scripts and all that stuff, but I always say parenting is not complicated, but it is difficult. Yeah. And I say it's not complicated because it really comes down to connection. If you can connect with another human being, you can effectively parent. But what makes it difficult is our stuff. Our stuff gets in the way. I call it that gap between the parent we want to be and the parent we are, or the person we want to be and the person we are. Our stuff falls in that gap and creates that gap and it creates, uh -huh. makes it really difficult. So how did I form the model? I, I get a lot of images before I get words. So sometimes I'll get an image and I'll have to sit with it for a minute to figure out what it means. And one day I was sitting in my living room and I just started getting images of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And when that happens to me, I know that I need to go to my whiteboard and just start writing down what I'm seeing. So I went in and I wrote down earth, air, fire, water. And the more I wrote and the more I sat with it, I, I stood back and looked at it and I said, 
this is a relationship model. Actually, this is really a parenting model. So that's how the model was born. I really, I just started writing about it and talking about it and using it personally. My poor kids. Um, <laughs> they, were my, they were the primary focus for this, for this model and its development. <laughs> so that's how I formed it. I love it. And really, isn't we really can't do the work unless we're also doing the work. Absolutely. You know, so, uh, so, so my daughter is uh, a part of the process of my work as well mm -hmm. with other people and myself and her and every relationship I'm in, really. Exactly. Because uh, it all comes down to connection. Exactly. That's so true. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this um, elemental living model. Yeah, so I have, um, I've been a spiritual seeker like my whole life. Even as when I was really little, I remember feeling a connection to something, but not being able to really name it. And while I was, um, since I've been on this path, I've engaged different spiritual practices and things of that nature. And one day I had, when I was in meditation, I had this insight. And I realized that the ways that I was trying to transform myself and my family really aligned with um, the ways in which spiritual practices are used to transform people and communities. So I had this bright idea, like, what if we approached parenting as a spiritual practice? So what I did was I started to explore various spiritual practices that I had engaged and other ones that I didn't quite know about. And I came up with this acronym PATH, P-A-T-H. Um, and each word represents like a key element that I noticed was similar across spiritual practices. And I'll go through them very quickly, but the T is the one that I'm going to, that focuses on the model. Um, so, and this is a framework I use with my clients, with myself to really help us get deeper into the work of parenting. And so the first one is P, it stands for perspective. And so I noticed that all spiritual practices call for a shift in how we view the world. So an example of that would be going from viewing ourselves as individuals to viewing ourselves as one, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. And um, I realized for me, being raised with that four horsemen mindset, I had to make a shift in how I thought. So I was raised with the perspective, spare the rod, spoil the child, you know, which is the whole biblical idea of spanking. Um, another one was uh, children should be seen and not heard, yeah. right? So I had to make a, perce a, perce a perceptual shift in how I thought, and I had to replace some of those with things like, um, I am a soul, my child is a soul, and we are here to teach one another and learn from one another, mm. right? Or, I love um, that. It's more of we're in this together. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so it, that was all part of like that embracing that, that family call. The other one is, and I know we talked about this briefly, a shift in perspective can also involve a shift in language. So going from good behavior and bad behavior to borrowing from more of that Buddhist mindset, um, skillful behavior, unskillful behavior, effective behavior, ineffective behavior. Yeah. When we say good and bad, that leads us to want to pull in or reject or get rid of. But when we say skillful or unskillful or helpful or unhelpful or ineffective or effective, that leads us to want to lean in, get curious and figure out what is it that I need to teach, you know, my child in this moment so they can make a more effective or a more skillful choice. So even things like as small as that. But um, those things matter so much. You do. I mean, to look at your child's behavior as just being unskilled mm -hmm. or ineffective is such a shift. Yes. Right? Versus, gosh, they're being bad. Mm -hmm. Or shouldn't they be able to behave better than this? Yes. Like, oh, or just, they're just unskilled. Yes. And it more gives, help or support. Yes, and it gives us a sense of power. Like, I can do something. When they're just being bad, it's sort of like, what do you do with that? Right. You know, that's when, like, the yelling and the spanking and the, all that comes in. Because it's right. like, you know, squash it. But right. when it's like, oh, what can I teach? Right. That brings in a whole different area, a whole different mindset, and a whole different energy into the space that allows you to maintain that connection while still seeking to figure out ways to teach your child a more effective way to be in the world in that right. way. Right. You know, um, go ahead. You're going to say something? I was going to say, and more effective ways to meet their own needs or to yes. get their needs met. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So um, the other thing is like when I'm triggered, 
I used to think like, or, or I would overreact like, oh, if I'm screwing up my kids or, you know, oh, I'm so, I'm such a bad mom or, you know, but perspective shift, shifting that into now when I do something that I'm not very fond of, I'll say, oh, okay, what did I learn? What am I learning in this moment? How can I give myself compassion and just yes. pause, right? So yes. that's another perspective shift. Like this is all a learning opportunity yeah. for all of us. So instead of beating up on yourself, what are you learning? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Just like when our children can't learn with mm-hmm. the blame and the shame, right. they don't learn in that either. Exactly. And so the A stands for awareness. And, and this is the most important part, I think, of, of everything that we do. All spiritual practices focus on awareness, increasing our awareness of how we are internally, you know, the, the, how our emotions, our body sensations, our thoughts, how they impact our actions, how they impact our belief, all of that stuff. It, it, they really focus on awareness just sort of sitting or doing something so awareness is such a big key to transformation and growth and so when i when i look at it from a parenting perspective i'm always asking what we're called to ask or we're invited to ask ourselves is you know how am i showing up in this moment or when i'm triggered what am i aware of Am I aware of what body sensations are coming up for me or what emotions are coming up for me? And this is a lot of what I do with the parents that I work with. It's getting clear on what exactly are those triggers? How do they show up for you so that you can be aware of them in the moment? Um, Gain that internal awareness. So um, I think a lot of, um, what was I gonna say? I completely blanked. Oh, so yeah, no, I think I was going to say was, you know, I use a lot of like guided practices to help parents get deeper into that, but simply asking yourself questions like, wait a minute, stopping and saying, where did that come from? What was that about? Can be helpful. We're so often unaware of what's going on in our body. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, do I feel upset? My stomach hurts or am I, am I angry and my chest hurts or my jaw is clenched, right? And just becoming aware of our bodies. Exactly. Too. It's so important. Mm-hmm. So important. And I even have a, um, an ebook on my website that talks about parenting triggers specifically, you know, yes. and like strat- 12 strategies and action steps that you can take right now to help get clear on those because that's how important I think they are. Yes. Um, Is that the link that you sent me? Yes, yes. Okay, so if y'all are listening today, when you get your recording, I will include that link in the follow up email too. Perfect. Thank you. You want to quickly tell them what your website is for listeners yes. who maybe aren't, uh, who are listening to this later? Yes, it's um, Dr. D-R-L is in Ladybug Willis, W-I-L-L-I-S dot com. So Dr. L Willis dot com. Thank you. Uh-huh. And then I'll skip T for a second and just quickly talk about H. So H is um, hold your center, holding your center. So a ha- another hallmark of spiritual practices is they're often embedded within them or surrounding them is um, an idea or a practice that helps us to maintain our center. Mm-hmm. So if, an example of that would be in Buddhism, they have like the eight noble truths. So right speech, right action, things of that nature, just ideas or mindsets or practices to help us to hold our center because when we're triggered, we often lose it. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, getting off center is exactly what happens. It we is. sort of split every which way except the center. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Left of center, right of center, up, down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, an example of Christianity would be like fruits of the spirit, you know, patience. Mm-hmm things of that nature. So all these practices and all these traditions have these ideas of like, this is how you can go, whether you're triggered or not, through life holding that center. Mm -hmm. And in parenting, um, that can look like, like one, another thing that I do is I help parents come up with different practices to, um, that they can do day to day so that they can hold their center. Mm -hmm. Things that align with them that they'll actually do. Right. Um, you know? And I think you and I are both, um, we have some hypnotherapy training. And so one thing that I think is really helpful is to be able to come up with um, personalized scripts for parents. Yes. I do that with parents that I work mm-hmm. with. Personalized scripts, not really long, like eight to 10 minutes that you can just listen to that can help you regain your center, especially around your parenting 
um, with your kids. And um, so going back to T, which stands for tools. And so all spiritual practices have tools or um, that help bring us back to center when we're off. So mindfulness meditation, for instance, you know, you return to the breath. Right. And that's that that's that practice of when you're getting kind of caught in with your tapping. Yes, Erin. Yes. Exactly. Tapping is a great one. Yes. Um, when you get off your center, you know, you're able to come back to the breath, you know, and not be uh -huh. blended with your thoughts. And this is when other practices have things like chanting, prayer, things of like that. Uh -huh. And, and I think what's interesting about that is that there's so much neuroscience now around coming back to your breath or, mm -hmm. or, or the chanting, but just what it does to our brains to help us get regulated again yes. so that we can then like return to our center mm -hmm. and hold our center. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's so important. And I think even in, as parents, we don't really talk about that as much, you know, and that was another reason leading into the next piece, our tools with um, the elemental living model it really is um, this research based thing. It integrates brain science so that we can use our brain because our brain, what really happens when we get triggered, it really goes offline. Okay. So it's using the, how our brain operates to our advantage. Um, so what it really does is it pairs the four elements, which is something that if you live on planet earth, you're pretty aware of the four elements, air, air fire and water. When, Everyone here should be familiar with that, I, I think. Exactly. <laughs> if not, let us know in the comments. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, go into more, well, we we, we'll go into more depth. Actually, you're going to go into more depth in a minute. Oh, gosh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, it, so we use those, we pair the four elements with parenting skills so that when we're in those high stress moments, oh. Um, we can recall the, the skills that we seem to be, that seem to elude us. And, and let me back up a little bit and just okay. do a little bit, a really quick nugget about how the brain works. That some people may know. Um, so what happens when we're triggered is our brain, um, the part of our brain that holds all of our information, like um, parenting skills and scripts that we get from blog posts and all of that stuff. Yeah. That part of our brain becomes Fort Knox. It shuts down, it locks down. Um, and the part of our brain, the more reptilian part of our brain, that brain that leads us to fight, flight, or freeze, um, that part of our brain is activated. So when we're highly triggered by our children or whomever, we don't really have access to the skills that we need to help us navigate through the situation, which is kind of crappy. <laughs> it's so crappy. Not helpful. Yeah. And then that leads us to feel guilty and frustrated and angry, you know, with ourselves because it's like, oh, I should know this. I just read it. Why? How did I fall back into that trap again? Right. Um, so what the model does is it's based on the idea that it is much easier for us to recall deeply embedded information than it is for us to learn new information or recall new information. Mm -hmm. So by pairing the four elements to different parenting skills, it gives us a bridge to that, to that, um, to the skilled information. So I want to do an exercise with you if you're okay with that. I am. <laughs> um, just to kind of give everybody some, to prove to everybody that you absolutely <laughs> have access to all the information you need to use this model. Oh, my daughter's so gonna appreciate this later today. <laughs> Good. Okay, so when you think of Earth, what are some words that come to mind for you? Um, the first thing that came to mind was scent, actually. Mm. I think about smelling the Earth and seeing the brown. Um, I feel uh, like rooted or held. Mm -hmm. um, calm grounded i really love like yes um barefoot comes to mind mm -hmm. <laughs> um <sighs> trees come to mind just uh in general i feel good here in my chest when yeah. i think about the earth mm -hmm. yes perfect so, and that's a lot of things people say, that rooted, that groundedness. I love the way you said you feel it in your chest, like in the body, right? Yes. In the present. Very definitely. much so, yeah. Um, so what about water? What comes to mind? Um, 
cooling. I think about like swimming in the summer or in the lakes or walking in, um, in creeks. Um, mm -hmm. It feels kind of like an adventure to me. Because mm -hmm. um, you never know what's going to show up in those creeks. <laughs> 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 Whoa, look at that. Let's move away from there. Um, <laughs> or, oh, look at that. Let's see if we can catch it. You know. Right, right. <laughs> um, so water for me is cooling. It's refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's also a, a good vibe for me mm -hmm. um, because it feels fun mm -hmm. uh, in a different way than the earth. The earth is grounding, but the water to me is about bringing fre fresh. Oh, it's about bringing freshness in. Yeah. Mm hmm It yeah. is like the best thing to do when you're bored out of your minds. <laughs> for me. Right, right. Jump in the water. Yes. So that water. refreshing, that freshness, that good vibe, the cooling. Um, some other things that people often say in workshops are like that um, flow or compassion, yes. um, you know, that emotional aspect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So um, what about when you think of air? what comes to mind <sighs> breathing mm -hmm. and expansive mm -hmm. um let's see air air is also a little bit cooling um mm -hmm. i don't always like air though mm -hmm. like when i think about it against my face mm -hmm. you know and i'm like ooh, no that's you're fanning the fire almost sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um which it can do. But it also feels light, right? So, um, you know, like carrying helium balloons can be really fun. Yeah, Aaron and so just that feels balloons. good, right? Mm -hmm. oh, just, yeah, so, um, yes. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, so exactly what she said. I was thinking about the last time it was windy, and we have this amazing kite mm -hmm. that flies so well, and it's so exciting. Yeah. Um, but it also feels a little bit like out of control, mm. you know, mm -hmm. like you can't control it. Let's see if we can go with it. <laughs> We're going to try to go with it. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. So the breath, the expansion, um, balloons floating, um, bit out of control. Can't always control it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what are some other things that people often say with air? So air, I get like, um, whimsical or playful. Yeah. I get that. I also get um, logical um, oh. thoughts, you know. Oh, um, yeah, because you're way up. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. But I love that. Um, yes, okay. So, and then the last one, fire. Well, I have multiple feelings about fire. I love it. Yes, people do. <laughs> right? It's because I think about the fireplace or the bonfire outside in the yard or roasting marshmallows or um, but then I also think, you know, forest fires and destruction mm -hmm. and, um, for a long time, my daughter had this image that our home was going to burn down like mm -hmm. for years and she would be, she had this fire bag and she had to have it packed and ready and we just wow. went with it. Wow. Right. Okay. We'll put all your things in the fire bag and we had mm -hmm. a plan. So there's also that element of fear and danger Yeah. and how do we, Contain another uncontainable, mm -hmm. right? Like wind. Um, although really, it's, water is also pretty uncontainable. But yeah, in but it feels ways. contained. Yeah, right. yeah. In some ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, anger, fancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Oh yes, boy, do I sometimes feel that fire. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So. I think as parents, we, uh, we're all kind of dialed into that one sometimes. Right. Yes. So that fire, destruction, fear. And I know you said you have mixed feelings about it because, mm -hmm. you know, it can also be um, passion or motivation, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. But Oh, yeah. Think about the times when you're angry or fiery and you get stuff done because of it. I know. I'm going to fight this or I'm going to fix this or I'm going to like whatever. But that fire, yeah. Yes. So many things in it fire. It pushes. It pushes. Mm -hmm. It gets things done. Yes. So um, what you just did was you showed this, like, this sense that we all have this connection to um, the elements. 
and they, they represent things for us. And they pretty much represent the same things for all of us, you know, when we, when we think about them or we're engaging them, depending on what form. I mean, if they're in a tornado form, then, you know, that's very different, but it's still that out of <laughs> right? Or if there's an earthquake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, when we, we're talking about our triggers, and the elements, I always say the first thing that you have to deal with is your awareness. It's like, how are you aware of where you are? So if I am triggered, I may be in a very fiery place. I can be in a very angry place. I need to be aware of that because how I'm aware of that is going to determine how I respond or react to the moment or to my child. I could be in a very, um, maybe a deep watery place, which is often associated with more of those sad feelings, you know, if I'm yeah. triggered, right? So being aware of that is going to be really important. Like I always say, I, um, the elemental living model is something that I still use even to this day when I get triggered. It's very, very helpful. So it's not like, so people say, so am I going to get to a point where I'm just not going to be triggered anymore? No. <laughs> when we're dead. I know, exactly. You're going to be triggered. Yeah. It's not that triggers are not the problem. Triggers are actually nature's way to help us to be aware, to use our past experiences to help us in the present moment so we don't have to constantly relearn. Um, you don't want to constantly relearn that a speeding car might hurt you. Like, you know, I mean, you want to you be clear on that. I probably shouldn't cross the tree straight in front of that big bus that's coming at me, right? So triggers are good. They're just strong emotions, right, that are right. That set off by people's actions or words or other experiences and things. But what gets us tripped up and often makes us feel guilty is our reactions. When we overreact to our triggers. That's what really gets us caught up. So when we, um, when we talk about being triggered, I have a sense, it's not that I'm not triggered, but I'm able to find self-compassion and curiosity when I am. I now turn in as opposed to start beating myself up for, from it. Right. Um, so, as I said, when we're triggered or we're feeling overwhelmed, our prefrontal cortex shuts down. We don't have a lot of access. So that part of your brain that needs to be active to give us all of those skills isn't really there. But we have the ability to recall those stored memories like these elements. So the elements sort of act as a bridge for us over to our skills, over to, yeah, over to the skills that we may not have the access to. So if we, if you'd like, I could give you some examples about what I mean, because often that helps. <laughs> I would love that. I think that would be great. Well, and I, I just want to clarify for my own, and, and maybe this will help yeah, some too. So um, it's not so much that we're not going to get triggered. Mm -hmm. It's that our response to that trigger will be less of a reaction and yes. more of a, a stamina right like mm -hmm. oh I'm not feeling good right and so we begin to feel it in our body and in our emotions before it gets out of control absolutely absolutely and we can own it as ours you know yes. because instead of the pain blame shame exactly and that's why awareness is so important you know when my son it's so interesting my daughter really triggers my husband where my son really <laughs> triggers me yeah. you know and but we're aware of that yeah. We're aware of that. So when my son does or says something like, um, so growing up, emotions were not good in my house. Like, like negative yeah. emotions were not acceptable. Um, it, more anger or passion, that sort of thing was fine. So my daughter is more of my fiery child. So when she displays that fire, I'm totally fine with that. I'm completely right. I can tell Bring you, whereas it. my yeah. husband was raised more in the, I can be on fire and I wouldn't shout, you know, type of family. Yes. So when yeah. she gets angry, he's like, ah, when he does, when she Scary. does the fire thing. Yeah. Whereas my son, when he gets like, he's, he's more of that air water quality. So when he's sort of like mopey and whiny, I'm like, ah, you know, oh, yes. <laughs> you're doing that thing. Yes. But I'm aware that's my stuff. Right. I'm aware that's my stuff. And I'm able to say, in our house, you are free to cry. Mm -hmm. You are completely free to cry. I would appreciate it if you didn't scream, kick, scratch, you know, any of that stuff. Fight, throw. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But you are free to cry. So when he does that and I'm triggered and I want to like 
oh, so why are you crying? There's yeah. nothing. I'm able to say, mm, that's me. That's my stuff. Yeah. And I'm aware of that because yeah. we are able to cry in this house. Yes. Right? So being aware not only of how we are in the moment, but also what I call our non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. and our negotiables, right? So for me, crying is completely negotiable. Like you can cry all you want, but when I'm triggered, there might be a part of me that says, no, crying, non-negotiable, stop it. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know that part. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm always like, where did you come from? Of course we can cry here. Yes, but it is so hard. It oh. is. Um, I miss Fancy's comment. What did she say? Sometimes I just can't control to shout at it. Yeah, the, the, the emotion or the moment. I wasn't sure what she meant by that. Yeah. Like shout at yourself or shout at the kid. Because, right. I mean, either can happen. You know? Either can happen. Either I can know happen. sometimes when I think I'm going to tell her to stop crying or something, I'll go, oh, I'm just frustrated and it's totally okay that you're crying. This is my stuff. Yes. And I'll just name it. Yes, and what a great model for her. Right, to be able to see, like we have hanging up in our hallway, it's so not cute, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a feelings chart. And when, when somebody's, when, whether we're excited or we're, we'll go and say, go to the feeling chart, tell me what you're feeling, you know, because yeah. I believe our children really need to have an expanded aware, like we need to feel beyond like happy, sad, mad, glad. Like there are more feelings. Yes. There's that. so many more feelings. <laughs> so helping him to understand that, but yes, we can shout at the moment or we can shout at the child, you know, but the more awareness you have and the more I found, the more my clients use this model, the more my clients use the parenting as a spiritual practice approach, yeah. which I do with them, it be, those, those spontaneous yells and things of that nature become much, much fewer. Yes. Um, you know, they they really don't. Like I can honestly say, I honestly cannot remember the last time I yelled at my child. I, I, I honestly can't. Um, but it was a journey. It yes. was a journey. Right. <laughs> I need a timeout when I can't figure the right words to address. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. Yes. We, yes. We call it rest breaks. I have no problem saying mommy yeah. needs a moment. And so thank you. That's so good. Yes. Knowing what we need for ourselves. For sure. And it's great modeling. It is. It is my daughter. She's five now, and she and she will say in a minute with her little fiery self, "I need a rest break," and she goes something off That's into awesome. her room. So and I'm like, "Good, good. Yes, okay. <laughs> Go I'll be it. here when you get back." I know exactly. Yeah. So, um, some examples. So, I was working with a mom who would get so angry and just start yelling at her child, especially in the mornings which um, I call those uh, tornado watch times, morning right. times and those moments where <laughs> that are fav that are, uh, the conditions are favorable for the formation <laughs> of yelling. <laughs> I think I actually like trying to get out the door. <laughs> yes. Yes. Trying to get out the door and her child is very much in air. It's like an air moment for him. He's very much in air. So he's like following the balloon and really yeah. distracted. And, and she's just getting more and more and more angry until eventually she just yells. So, and she literally said to me, I loved it. She said, I feel like he just needs to get his head out of the clouds. And I was like, so funny. You say that. Yeah. <laughs> Because right. that's what it feels like, you know, he's very distracted, it has this very air quality to it. So, um, so I said, okay, so let's look at this elementally. So he's very air. What, ex what, what types of things help air? If he's like up, what, what needs to happen? And she was like, well, I guess if he's floating up in the clouds, he needs grounding. And I said, okay, okay, so that's earth. Let's go with that. So we actually walked through it, talked through it, and she came up with some really specific grounding practices that she could do with her child and herself um, yeah. during those moments. Things like um, instead of yelling, walking over to him and touching his arm, right? Yes. That's a very grounding thing when you physically, anything to bring them back to that present moment. I think it was something you said with the air. Oh yeah, with the, like being in the, with the earth, I mean, bring in the body. Anything you can do to bring them back into the body. So when you have a child just doing the air thing, um, and you're finding yourself really angry, think like, I, I always picture a mountain. Mm -hmm. so the air is blowing really, really hard. And if the air hits the face of a mountain, it's going to slow down, right? So right. that earth slows that air. 
right? So if the air is sort of out of control, what, what can you do to slow it? What can you do to ground it? You don't want to suffocate you know, no. or bury it, but what can you do to ground it? So um, we talked about just touching his arm, um, joining in a little bit, making like a joke, making light of it, you know, um, um, going up. One thing that she came up with, I was really impressed with. She said, um, if I go over to him and I smile, you know, and, and just say, Hey, you know, with a smile, even though she's frustrated because yeah. yeah. smiling, even if you're frustrated or angry can, you know, help you to feel Sets happy. off endorphins, right? Exactly. Yeah, for, for everybody. If it I does. smile, my endorphins and my child's endorphins are. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the first question I always say to ask is what is the purpose of the behavior? Always, like if you're frustrated by a behavior, always ask yourself, what is the purpose? Mm -hmm. Because that does a couple of things. One, whenever you ask a question, it automatically activates your frontal lobe. Anytime you, that's why when I used to work with a lot of trauma clients and they'd be really activated, I would say, can you tell me what time it is? You know, not because I needed to know the time, but because they have to like click back into their bodies mm -hmm. and actually look. So asking a question like, hey, what are we supposed to be doing right now? Or something mm -hmm. like that is always helpful. Um, so for what's the purpose, um, she was saying, well, you know, maybe he just wants to get some energy out. Maybe he just, you know, and, and so what we, what we did when she said, listed the purposes, it allowed her then to come back and say, you know what? I get that. I get needing to get energy out. I get feeling confined. Like he just woke up. He has a lot. Of, okay. I understand that. So it helps us to develop compassion when we ask that question. Um, another example, I had a mom whose child would throw a tantrum every single day after school. They'd get home and he would just lose it. Yeah. And she was like, I can't anymore. I just can't. And I loved this example because we did the, what is the purpose? And she said, you know, he's probably really tired. It's been a long day. I know what that's like. Um, so we started talking about, you know, she said, okay, so he's in fire. He's like, okay, good. So what do we need to bring to fire? Water. Water, yay! <laughs> so we started talking about different ways that she could bring water to the situation. And um, a little ways through, she said, you know what, can I be honest? And I said, yeah. And she said, in those moments, I don't want to bring water. I just, I don't want to bring anything. I just want to get, I don't, I don't want to be there anymore. I'm so angry and I'm so exhausted. And I was like, that's so good. So what element comes up in you in those moments? And she was like, fire. And I said, so what do you need? And she looks at me and she said, wait, I can bring myself water. Yeah. And it was such this like epiphany for her. Drink water, shower. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It was such this epiphany. And it was funny because when she said it, she almost like kind of flipped around to herself. Like, why would I even ask that? But the right. idea of her bringing herself water. And I, I, I always talk about that because I think in the parenting community, I've literally heard people, you know, um, experts say things like, you know, well, once you have kids, you know, your needs don't matter as much. And right. I'm just always like, oh, stop saying that. Yeah. It is important. It is yeah. important. Not only does it help us, but it also helps our children to know, oh, I can take care of myself. I'm important. All right. So we talked about what's a way that you can bring yourself water first. And then she said, you know, when she, so now she has this practice when she comes home, she um, puts her child in front of TV for 30 minutes and she just goes in her room and does whatever she needs to do. And her daughter is aware of it. She, she'll go in and her daughter will be like, oh, it's mommy time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So she gets that, that sense of, okay. So even if her, if her daughter gets really upset, um, which she actually doesn't do much anymore, funny enough, but she's aware that, okay, I have my time. I know it's there. I know I can deal with it. I know I can bring myself water. Mm -hmm. So that was really important. Um, and the other, the other example I'll give is, because a lot of times people think this model is just for little kids. And I'm like, no, it's really not. Um, uh, my, one of my favorite examples is a mom of a teen. And this teen, she was very stubborn, as <laughs> she described her. And she's like, I can't get her to do any of the chores. And the biggest chore she had to do was dishes. And they would fight constantly over these dishes. So we would say, okay, what's the purpose of the behavior? And um, at first, she was addressing it like, oh, well, my daughter just wants to be heard or she wants to be understood. So she would say things like, 
I understand you that, you know, you don't really want to do the dishes right now, but it's really important that the dishes get done. And that really wouldn't work. <laughs> that daughter would just, and they would still get into this fight. So what I said was, I said, okay, um, let's look at like the actual time periods, like what exactly is going on? Because what she identified when she, I was like, what element does she feel like she's in? And she says, it feels like she's like a hard earth. You know, she's like, no, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. You know, and I think we can all identify with that. And um, so I said, she was trying to bring water to the situation with the, I understand that um, because, you know, if you bring water to hard earth, it softens it, right? And she was trying to empathize. Like, yes, that, that's was. good. Those are good. Yeah. It was. it was a very, very good thing to do. So what we did was we started looking at like, what exactly was going on in the situation? Like, what is the purpose? Is it really that she doesn't feel hurt? And then the more we started looking into it, what we realized was usually whenever she asked her daughter to do the dishes, her daughter was in the midst of something. She was doing something. So what she said was maybe how I can bring water to her is to acknowledge that she's in the middle of something. So I got this email from her. It was so great. She said, um, yesterday, my daughter, she was in the room and I went in and I said, honey, I know you're really, you're in the middle of something right now. I can, I totally get, you know, you don't want to stop what you're doing. How much time do you need to finish this so you can get the dishes done? And she said, her daughter kind of looked at her like, who are you? And she was like, 10 minutes. And she said, okay, so finish up. And in 10 minutes, you know, just go knock out the dishes. And she left and she said, 10 minutes later, I heard the water running in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was one of those things where it was like figuring out that purpose and then bringing the element in the way that the situation is calling can be so helpful. Right. Um, you know, to that moment and being able to think not necessarily like you, I mean, yes, she could say, oh yeah, my daughter's being really stubborn and fresh, you know, of course, like that's frustrating. But looking at it as, okay, how is, what element might be presenting itself, right? Okay, it's harder, or okay, it's fire, okay, it's, you know, that helps us to be able to access almost intuitively what we need to bring to that situation mm -hmm. to help it out. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, this is really, oh, what were you gonna say, Cindy? I was just thinking that, you know, when you think about the elements, this is what came for me. I'm not sure I can articulate it, but I'll try. So when I'm thinking about bringing in water or earth, there's still so many things to, that you could draw from. Like, okay, mm -hmm. do they need choices? Do they need empathy? You know, you still have to figure that piece out. But the imagery itself, I can imagine, helps ground me when I'm feeling stirred up. Exactly. What is that? What is the imagery? Okay, it's the water. It's, you know, the ocean. It's that tree in the ground. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that helps us. I, and I guess I'm getting it. <laughs> That's what helps us. It's that imagery that helps us reconnect with our thinking brains. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and I actually... Of... No, it's so true. And I actually, I, I think I just removed it, but because um, I want to flip it a little bit, but um, if you hop on my email list, you'll get an update of it. I actually had an ebook up. Um, it was really long, so I'm going to shorten it, but um, it actually had different skills, parenting skills associated with each element. Love so it. it's that one of those sense. things where it's like sort of like this quick cheat sheet that you yeah. can use. And I might just post the cheat sheet, um, you know, of like for water. Yeah, you can draw on the empathy or yeah. for air. You can do problem solving again, that logic piece. Make a meme. Make a it's, meme. <laughs> yes, yes, I can do memes. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yes. So it just kind of like puts these and it was just sort of like this intuitive sense of like, what is, what is an earth, you know, yeah. skill feel like, you right. know, with this. And, and surprisingly they fit very easily mm -hmm. into these elemental, mm -hmm. you know, spaces. So yes, if you're interested in that, hop on the email list and I will send that out because I think, <laughs> I think it can be really, really helpful. So do we use those elements to explain and teach? Oh, I'm so glad. Fancy, seriously, it's like you were reading my mind. I totally did not tell her to ask that question. So. <laughs> well, they're in cahoots behind the scenes. She but asks, was, we use those elements to explain, to teach the little kids. Yes, 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 yes so absolutely wonderful. we do. 
perfect example of that. I use these all the time with my kids. My daughter's five. My son is nine. And um, we talk about, um, we say, so like if, if they're fighting with each other or something like that, or especially my son is like nag nagging at his sister, you know, I'll say, is what you're about to say going to bring earth or, or going to bring water or fire? You know, because if my daughter's like rearing up, are you, what are you about to say? Going to bring water or fire? And he'll just kind of look at me and walk away. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's totally about to bring fire, you know? Um, so you can yes. actually start using these discussions, you know, or these words. Like when my son, my son has this very air aspect to him, you know, and he'll just be really distracted and kind of moving around. I'm like, wow, we're really airy today, aren't we? You know? And so they really start to learn what these mean. One of my favorite examples, though, with my daughter, because I talk about especially the fire and the water a lot. She was upstairs playing with her brother, and they started to get in this little fight, <laughs> and I could hear them. And then all of a sudden, I hear her pounding down the stairs. And she said, I was talking to Joseph, and my fire was starting to come up, and I couldn't find water, so I just came downstairs. <laughs> and that's how I found my water. <laughs> So, that's amazing she went I, to the well right yes, she totally did and she yeah. asked her and she'll tell they'll both say I brought water they're so they're so proud of themselves I brought yeah. water like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yes this is something you can ask yes she totally got it she totally yes. got it and that's the beautiful thing about this too with kids especially their imaginations are so robust and they, so this type of thing really works for them mm. way better than just talking at them because they get imagery. They totally get imagery, yeah. you know? And so it's something that we can really um, help them, use with them to help them understand. My next phase is to actually come up with, um, I should apply a great to know this. Yes, please do. Yes, use the language, use the language with them and they'll start to reflect it back to you. And it also helps them to get an internal awareness, you know, of what's going on with them. Um, so yes, please do. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, I was gonna say something else, but I got lost. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you have another question, you're welcome to post it in the chat or the Q&A, but I just love this. Um, this moving away from the four horsemen model. Could you say what those four horsemen are again? Yes, they're um, pain, blame, shame, and avoidance. Avoidance. Yes. yes. And that often comes in the form of um, sort of, it can be just checking out or avoiding the situation completely. Like if you were raised in one of those homes where problem, like I said, or like, you know, you could be on fire and nobody would say anything about it. <laughs> it's like, let's just avoid all the, nothing's wrong. Everything's good. Or, um, you love the innovative film. Oh, thank you, Erin. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, just, uh, being able to, so it's that, or sometimes it's just like neglect, you know, like I'm just not going to even, Right. You know, sort Can't of. do it. And the parent right. might be shutting down themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Based on their own histories. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I say all this and, and it's not in a judgmental way at all. Like right. I have had to come through this process myself. You know, I had to relearn. And a lot of the, interestingly enough, I get a lot of, um, I'm taking up my night here. Yay. <laughs> so glad. I work with a lot of, I get a lot of like spiritual seeking moms who call me a lot of times and I love, I love it. It's great. But it's one of those things where I say that um, the H again, yes. It's one of those things where I say there are a lot of these moms. So H is um, holding your center. Yeah. Holding your center. Thank you. It's these moms who, you know, or these people who they, 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 they feel like they're on top of it in so many different ways. They um, are really into like self-development or spiritual development, might read, you know, all these different, you know, motivational books or something like that, do yoga, meditate, that sort of things. But they, they come back and they feel like there's this disconnect, mm -hmm. you know, and I think we've all felt that sort of like this disconnect between how we want to show up and how we're showing up. Um, and so being able to find ways, whether it be through a coach or whatever approach you use, finding ways to 
get clear on what are my triggers, the awareness, um, what perspective am I bringing to this moment? Does that need to shift at all? Um, what tools can I bring in that will really help me? Um, and how do I hold the center? You know, what types right. of things do I need to hold the center? It can right. be super helpful. Right. Um, yeah. And the last thing I'll say, if you are interested in learning more, head up my website. If it looks like, you know, you want to learn more, send me a message or I think I have an offer on there that you can sign up for. And we will do, if you say that you are from the No Spank Challenge, I will um, work with you to develop a, um, so we were talking about like the meditation, yeah. like a personalized meditation that you can use on a daily basis to help deal with some of these triggers and some of these things that you might be going through. Because I think, like I said, the awareness is so important. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Willis. Yay. Thank you. It is just so lovely to have you here and to share these things. I mean, people are loving it. It's so, the imagery aspect just mm -hmm. adds a whole nother dimension to this yeah. type of approach to parenting. And it's just lovely. So yes. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. <laughs> it was. It was so fun. Um, <laughs>